Welcome to the Our Show once again on Andy D TV. I have here with me a wonderful pastor from ICGC, that is International Central Gospel Church. Their head pastor is Dr. Menza Otabel. Welcome, Pastor Frederick Dakun Ashon. Thank you. How are you feeling? I'm very great, and uh, I must uh, express my gratitude for having me. And I also want to say shalom to your cherished and uh, revered viewers. Okay. So thank you for having me. Wonderful. It's a privilege. Wonderful. Um, when did you become a pastor? When? Yeah. I've been in the ministry close to about uh, 25 to 26 years now. Wow. Yes. And uh, I have been in ICGC about uh, 24, yes, about years. Wow. Almost, yes, quite. You look quite young. Yes, but uh, I'm an old man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that I think it's, it's the grace of God that has made me look like that. Most people, when they see me, they think, okay. when I mention my age, they, they don't believe. Wow. Uh, yes, I look okay. more youth youthful. We should all stay closer yeah. to God. That is the it makes it it makes us look <laughs> much more younger. That's it. <laughs> right. What is the foundation of ICGC? ICGC, which is uh, founded under uh, the leadership of the uh, General Vasia, mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, Dr. Menza Otebel, right, and also with other um, team, because of course you know. Uh, one man doesn't start a church. You need people to okay. support it. Yes, so which um, commenced in the year um, in 1984 mm -hmm. uh, in February wow. 26th. So it started on the in the year February 26th in the year 1984. Okay. Now, the International Central Gospel Church, the international, of course, because we are global. Right. And because the vision he had is to go global, is first and foremost is to um, uh, extend the vision to Ghanaians and Africa and then mm -hmm. also global. So that, that is the international. Okay. Now, the central is actually has to do with the center. The so center means that the center of the gospel. Right. Now the center of the gospel, which we all know, is Jesus Christ. Right. Because the Old Testament and the New Testament are all talking about one person okay. from Genesis to Revelation. Okay. The center of all the two uh, uh, covenants, which we call testament, okay. centers on Christ. Right. So international central gospel church. Okay. That is all. The church, of course, we know what church is. Okay. Yes. How many branches do you have in the UK? I think currently we have in about uh, 10 or so. 10 branches? Yes, I okay. want to believe so. Okay. Yeah. And you are a leader? You are heading one? I'm heading one, one of the branch okay. of the church, which I, I started by the grace of God. I started uh, in 2016. Okay. I was actually pastoring my church, one of our churches in Ghana, which I pastored for 10 years and uh, with other satellites that I opened until I had a leading to come here to um, come and then uh, start a new work. Okay. So uh, this September, that is on the 22nd, and we, we will be two years in existence. Wow. And, uh, God has been When you say you were, you, were, you were pastoring your own church, is it? Not one my own of, church, a, one of, of our the branches, branches, yes, but okay. I started it. Okay. Yes. Okay. I started it when I complete. I was in the university once I, what, the time I was in the university, mm -hmm. I started, I was made to start. And then um, from there, after my graduation, I continued. So uh, at the 10th year, I had a lead into uh, move on to come here to come in. Well, what did you study work. at university? I did, I did theology and missions. Okay. Yes. So you always knew you wanted to be a pastor? I have been a pastor before. I was doing the work before I, I went to the school. Okay. Well, yeah. What is so important about studying theology? You know, I, I think, was... see, in everything that you do, mm -hmm. I trust that you need to have some form of uh, knowledge about right. it. Right. You look into the scriptures, okay, 
more than half of the New Testament was written by Apostle Paul, yeah. who is a very lettered, well lettered man. He's right. a doctor, mm -hmm. and uh, he was not even one of the first lineup of Jesus' disciples. He never saw Jesus mm. with his phys physical eyes. He was not there. But right. he wrote most of the book. Peter was a fisherman. He's not that right. educated and the right. rest of it. And then, well, Luke was educated. But right. you, because education is that important in everything that you do, mm -hmm. if you're educated, you'll be mm. doing that same, being in the same field with others. But mm. you, because of the education that you have, would give you some kind of a, a head start ahead of uh, the, the rest. So uh, that's, that's the, 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 the reason for which one has to do that. And it's, it's a vision that uh, General Vasia had that almost all his pastors need to be uh, at least uh, well lettered. Do you, do you have prophets within ICGC? Yes, we do. You do? Yes. We never hear of them. Yes. The reason being that, you know, there is one thing about General Vasia which has right. to do with modesty. Okay. Okay. And uh, we have several of, mm. of, of, of us in the in ICGC right. who have prophetic giftings. Okay. It's my area of calling. Okay. Okay. But you see, it's modest to want to go by the name pastor. Okay. And uh, also the reason, other reason being that the, the, the title, if you like, or the office, because the prophetic is an office, mm -hmm. it's been really uh, uh, run down, to, so to speak. So now you, you go by the name prophet, then people raise some question marks on your head. They want to find out whether you're also one of them. Why well, are you discrediting prophets in Ghana? Not at all. Do you have anything personal against any prophets in Ghana? I cannot say that I have anything personal against right. any prophet. What about their works in terms of the Christian work? Well, there has been some kind of degradation, I must say. Right. Um, a lot of rot is in the system. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't think that um, I'm in a position as a, a policeman to begin to fish uh, them pinpoint out. and fish them out okay. and arrest them because that according to our Lord, he said, let it all grow, according to the scriptures. Right. Okay. Everybody should do what he thinks, but at the end of the day, on the day of judgment, we all missing. account to, yeah, so right. I think it's, it's not in my remit to sort of uh, condemn anybody in particular right. that this one is from God and yes. this one is not. You just mentioned there are a lot of ruts within the Christian ministry. Prophets are selling oils and soaps, perfumes, name it, a lot of them. And we normally pay for prayers. Your pastor, your old general overseer, uh, recently, I think last year or so, uh, was demanding um, dollars, various sums of dollars for various prayers. What, what's your justification to that? Well, I want to say this, that he did not demand Okay. Now, when it comes to giving, right. and I mean offering, okay. um, it's something that God had initiated from the beginning. Okay. If we have time, we will go into the scriptures from the Old and to the New Testament. <laughs> I could give you loads of scriptures that uh, endorses that. Okay. Now, what there is no preacher mm -hmm. that would... Um, sort of demand money from or offering right. from any church member at gunpoint. Now, if the man of God had raised a fund, you are sort of, uh, it's up to you to determine whether you want to give it or not. Did he, it's a willingly something that is to be done willingly. It is not something that is sort of you being forced into Given it. I, at any point, did, are you saying at any point did he not mention particular sums, $500 for so so and so prayers, $5,000 for so so and so prayers? Well, I, you see, when you look at I know what you, this happened last year. That right. was a last year greater works, right. and which became a whole lot of issue. Right. Okay. Now, it was sort of category of <laughs> offertory which was being called. Right. Uh, it was done by... Um, Ashimolo, Pastor Ashimolo. Okay. Okay. It's something that has been his trademark. He does it everywhere he goes, not only 
uh, uh, with with ICGs or for greater works. Mm -hmm. He does it everywhere he goes to, mm -hmm. almost everywhere, mm -hmm. as, mm -hmm. as far as I can mm -hmm. uh, recollect. You know, so it was one of those occasions that uh, that demand was was made. Right. Oh, okay. Yes, and people came out to to give. What is so according. different from that as to those of the prophets? Well, you see, I think there wasn't anything physical in exchange of of the prayer. There okay. wasn't anything. Right. Now it's different from somebody selling oil. Mm -hmm. And say, okay, this is two thousand. This right. is three thousand. Right. Come and then you pay and then you get it. Right. Okay. Now, when you look at the accounts in Genesis, right, um, we saw how two people went to offer sacrifice to God. Okay. And uh, which has to, which is uh, Cain and his brother Abel. Mm -hmm. Now. When the, the sacrifice was done, at the end of the day, one was accepted and the other was rejected. Mm -hmm. Now, the question then is, why should God do that? Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible made it clear to us that the heavens and the earth is of the Lord or, not, or belongs to God. Mm -hmm. So whatever that is in is his. Right. So now, he has every right to demand from us as human beings that live on the earth. Okay. Right. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm, I'm getting you. I'm, I'm getting you perfectly. $500, $5,000 and above. Yes. What if congregants are unable to afford it? That is do, a very... Do, do, are that's, they a, not that's, a, that's, a, that's a good question you've right. asked. What if they are unable to? Then yeah. it raises the question, what happens to them? Yeah. Nothing happens. That They will walk home free because they were not uh, under any... Uh, uh, obligation or force to give. That means they will never have received those greater works prayers. I believe that the prayers were offered generally. It was not only for those that uh, were or brought the money or gave that offertory. Right. So to speak, it's not. It there was a general prayer. Mm -hmm. I wanted to to finish what I was saying. Then you see the point I'm coming from. Please do having to do with the okay. fact that right. One, one offering was rejected, others, the other one was accepted. They were from the same loins, the same womb. Now, clearly, it tells that what Cain did not offer a better sacrifice to God. Okay? Abel did. Now, you saw God's interest in giving or offered because they were the first people that had the privilege mm -hmm. or the, 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 the opportunity to give to their maker or the creator who owns the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when the amount was mentioned, mm -hmm. everybody was expected to give liberally according to what they have. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wasn't in there at the time, mm -hmm. but if I, I happened to be there, I would have given what I, I have. Mm -hmm. Easy. And if I don't, I would walk free after the service. Right. And I'll be blessed. Okay. Are you sure you'll be blessed? Definitely so, because at the end of it's not the offering that I would give alone that would open doors for me. Okay. Right. Y you understand what I I'm do saying? understand. Yes. So why then do you still demand for something? You see, I want at, at least I the prophet, the prophet, maybe, are, maybe are giving let's find something a, out. Let's find a, a better word for right the, because the, when the demand comes in, uh, requesting the, the good. Okay, so why, why that, are you that requesting? Request, You're right? Great. If I request something from you and right. you have and you give me, right. it means you have given me willingly. Right. But when it becomes a demand, right. then it means that I sort of I'm I'm trying to force it out of you. But you there see, are so many what, ways of doing that. In, you, you pastors you work, you pastors work on, on emotion and psychology mm -hmm. of their congregants. Okay. So, um, and when, when somebody when, comes... When you say, do you are the one asking the questions. Right. But when you say... Uh, you, you, you do. You, the emotions and... Well, of course. You do counseling, don't you? I do counseling. You do counseling, right? Yes. So it would... It would I mean, somebody walks into your office um, and you have a way of telling them to pay because... If you tell me if I'm able to come up with this money and no matter where I get the money, I bring it, mm -hmm. I'm blessed. But end of the day, technically, I will not be blessed, right? Because if I rob somebody 
and come and pay it for greater works, it doesn't mean I'll be blessed. But yeah. you pastors don't teach it. Um, I, I think that is relative. If you say we don't teach it, right. um, I believe that there are several pastors or thousands of them out there that teach their congregants as to how they are to give and what to benefit. Because anything that is to be given to God, mm -hmm. one, that thing must be holy. Okay. How come okay? you never talk about it? Sorry? How come pastors from I ICGC, the rest, uh, Duncan Williams, we can name it. Well, Duncan it's, Williams it's, is not an ICGC uh, Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just giving you some sort of example. Well, I can speak for him. Well, uh, on, ICGC. Uh, yes. You, you guys never talk about where money comes from into the church. Mm -hmm. Greater works. I'm an arm robber. I'm coming to, to donate for greater works. Will I be blessed? Let me ask you well. You see, it's very impossible You're for right. every pastor during offering time to stand by the side of the offering basket. I remind. And, and no, scan everybody by asking them, where did you get this money from? Why would before you, you give the why offering. Why wouldn't you remind them that the money you are going to donate to God at this moment, sure, do your own justification mm. in your own heart, in your own mind, mm. and believe that you are putting it in the bowl of God. Is it right? Did you get it from the right source? Why don't you remind the congregants, us, whenever we are doing it, especially we are doing the Holy Communion, you remind us. Mm -hmm. You remind us. This is the blood and body of Jesus Christ. Right. We're doing this in the remembrance of God. If you have sinned, if you have done this, you should not take it. Mm -hmm. Why can't we do it during offering? Well, if you, if you think that, uh, let me ask this. You, you think uh, saying that, Right. to the congregants before offering. A, lo a lot of people have resented from taking Holy Communion because they pastors, feel they are not right. Thank you. Don't you think people will have done the same thing or probably even come up and tell pastors, this is what it is. I'm, I'm sorry, but I robbed the bank. I'm, I'm very sorry. I don't, don't you see, think pastors you see, are when, to act when, that way? When all these things boils down to the individual and his understanding, with God. Right. Now, whatever we have to do for God, right. it should be based on faith. There should be some kind of belief system that we need to have before we do it. Right. Okay. Now, with the communion, mm -hmm. the reason why there is a reminder, mm -hmm. because there is a, a biblical clause mm -hmm. that gives that, okay. that if you eat it or you go on the lost table unclean, right. mm -hmm. then many have become weak as a result of that. Okay. So it comes, it gives you, the, the preacher, or if you like, the priest, the opportunity to remind members because you don't want them, you don't want to give them anything or minister anything to them, mm -hmm. which at the end of the day would make them weak. Are you so, saying that offering from different diverse sources that are ungodly wouldn't make anybody weak? Well, we the, the Bible is our constitution. Okay. Okay. So right. everything that we do right. is governed. It has to be governed by a scripture. All right. Okay. It has to be word be, word based. So I'm saying that with the, because you uh, made mention or you're trying to uh, liken or if you like uh, put the offering and the communion, communion yeah. in the same pedestal mm -hmm. that the way we do it by reminding members right. that before you eat. Examine yourself. Right. Okay. So you're saying that why don't we do the same with offertory? That exactly. before you give, examine yourself where you get the money from. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm saying that there isn't any biblical clause to that effect. And okay. that is not to say that you can then go and rob a bank and bring the money to God. Okay. You say, because the pastor is receiving it maybe ignorantly where you got the money or where not. He has mentioned it. So out of your faith and belief. What you have, you have is what you give. Okay. You see. Right. So um, I think if you have to do it whereby every Sunday or at the least opportunity to give to God, the pastor have to stand by the offering bowl and say, where do you get this money? Where do you get the money from? Is it from your salary? Did you rob a bank? Mm. Or you went to engage in prostitution mm. before you got this money? So we are not taking it. I think that that would, 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 would not be the, the way to go. Certainly so. Born again Christians are foolish. What did your pastor mean by that? 
You see, I think um, we have to look at uh, the whole thing, the statement he made in contest. Okay. How did he you make know? it? Um, you are quoting, so I want you to get it exactly as what? I said, because right. you, you are saying that okay. he, he made a, 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 you are quoting him. Yeah, but no, so no, no, in no. what context? Well, that is, I'm only reading from sources and yeah. not exactly, but you so are what closer. So source No, well, but you are closer to him. I'm doing the question. You, you are closer to yes. him. Yes. You are closer to him. And I'm sure which, whichever the contest is, it meant that born again Christians are ignorant or foolish. All right. So, well, so I don't, what, what, I don't, what, what did he mean by that? I don't share that, that idea. What, what did he mean by that? Well, I don't share that idea okay. that born-again Christians So you disagree foolish. with your head? Wait, wait. I'm saying that. Right. I don't share that idea. Right. Secondly, right. I believe he did not say that in the, the contest. Okay. Of the contest in which you are trying to bring it up. Because okay. you will agree with me. Mm. That there were, uh, what is going on now, even currently, mm -hmm. in the Ghanaian Christendom, right. uh, it's quite disturbing. Mm. So his, it was his, one of his attempts to cure that kind of thing that goes on. Like whereby what? Like what? you are giving offering. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Of course. Okay. You must, you must, it's not everywhere you go right. where somebody in a, comes up to you and says he's in cassock or in clerical and demand an offering, he says of the Lord, and then you, you pour your money out. Of course, you have to discern. you see. Now, so many things are happening, which you and I are very much aware of in there. So that was one, one of the occasions he was trying to cure that thing by cautioning um, the body of Christ. And okay. as of foolishness, um, I don't think that is a wrong word to use because uh, Apostle Paul had used it on the Galatians it by saying they are foolish. It wasn't certain. Obviously, his offering, I mean, his request for dollars or for prayers wasn't, nobody criticized him for it. But but here he goes with others you, doing similar. You, you say nobody criticized well, you. You've just had raised it. So that's well, part of well, the criticism. Well, no, no, no. But I mean, <laughs> you, you never had anybody, a powerful man like him. Yes. Because whether you like it, he's one of the powerful figures within Definitely. the Christian religion. I mean, I can be in some village in Ghana and I will speak against Pastor Otabel and yeah. probably he will not be noticed. Yeah. Once he speaks, we listen. He travels. So far. don't you think... Uh, he probably had, uh, um, somebody might be thinking, well, you requested for dollars for prayers, mm -hmm. $500, not even in CDs, in dollars. Yeah. And then other pastors are doing similar, maybe yeah. following your footsteps. By this time, we'll give you water. Just come for it. We, that is a gift. But, you know, help us grow our church. They might have their own interpretation. Mm -hmm. Are they foolish then? I, that's why I'm saying that um, I cannot speak for anybody Right. But for, of course, I'm in an organization, mm -hmm. a Christian right. uh, organization, uh, the International Central Gospel Church, for okay. that matter. Now, if you, as you raise the question about, uh, or trying to bring out that there have been uh, other ministers of God mm -hmm. who have done, who have done the same thing mm -hmm. by uh, taking money from their congregants or mm -hmm. unsuspecting congregants. You know, by giving them oil, mm. towels, yeah. and all those things, right. and taking money. In his case, right. he didn't take anything from anybody. He only offered prayer. Now it is stretching of one's faith. Okay, giving didn't start from that. Giving is one of the bedrock of Christianity mm -hmm. because God gave out His best. You see, in the account of John chapter 3, verse 6, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So if it were to be in money, you would know that God had given the, the biggest amount you can think of to humanity. So giving, I see it as a, a rare privilege for um, man to give to so in support of God's work. You, you, you get the point I'm trying to right. make. Okay. Now, in, in terms of... What, what is your own understanding of offering and tithing? Okay, now, um, offering and tithing is, is a very key, uh, as I said, uh, 
subject, I right. must say, and also uh, very an integral part of the Christian faith. Okay. Now, in every religion, there are diverse religions mm -hmm. in uh, or faith in the okay. world, right. and every one of them there is an element of giving. Right. Every one of them. Okay. There is an element of mm -hmm. giving. Now, uh, giving to God in terms of offering, it is something that has been there from old. Like we quoted in the book of Genesis. Right. The first group or the first people that gave to God were Cain and his brother Abel. Mm -hmm. Now, the work of God itself the work of God as it is. There are people that have been set aside by God, okay, in order to ensure that the work of God is run effectively. Mm -hmm. Now, in the book of Numbers, we saw that when the Israelites had left Egypt and had gone to the, the land that they were promised, all the 12, the 12 tribes, of the 12 tribes, mm. each and every one of them were giving a portion or a parcel of land to cultivate. In mm -hmm. other words, if you like, you say a place to work. Mm -hmm. With the exception of the Levite, right. they were excluded, and God did that purposefully. He did that so that the Levite wouldn't be involved or engage in any other work apart from um, taking care of the Ark of the Covenant. In other words, to serve him right now in serving god he required that one's full attention the whole of your strength the whole of your might the whole of your love the whole of your heart mm -hmm. so the levites were a people that were set aside who never had any of the land that was shared to the mm -hmm. 11 okay so that the 11 were to go and work and when they work, definitely, because of they have, definitely would have to serve God. They, they, they have that connection with God. And mm -hmm. therefore, somebody have to be there as their representative. Okay. So whilst they are, as we are here, we have somebody behind the camera. Mm -hmm. You cannot do it whilst you are interviewing right. and be behind the camera. Right. He's doing his job right. and you are also doing yours. Yeah. At the end of the day, it works as a unit. Right. So now... The Levites were to, to serve God in the, in the synagogue or in the tent. Mm. And then the other 12, uh, the 11 tribes of Israel would go and work. Mm. And then they bring the, the, how do you call it, the fruit. Mm. In those days, of course, they were not giving money. Mm -hmm. They were giving fruits, what their produce. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. But today, of course, the reason why it was so at the time because... The only work or job that people do at the time is um, plant and animal husbandry. Mm -hmm. That is what they do. So that was why they could give that to the priest right. at the time. Right. You see, now we don't, of course, how many people are in farming now? Just few. But are, are we having pastors who are dedicated fully by their mind, their work, everything to God 24 Hours basis, uh, like the Le the Levites, the priests were doing then. It's it's yes and no. In so are we supposed to pay tithe or are we supposed to give out offering? Tithe and offering, you see, tithe is more or less like your utility bill. Okay. Okay. Right. Tithe is to the believer. <laughs> okay. It's your utility bill. Okay. You pay tithe. You don't give it. You okay. pay tithe, but you give offering. Okay. Why do I? What do I mean by paying tithe? Paying tithe is mandatory by the by by the the law of God. Right. Okay. Now people think that um, tithing is an Old Testament thing. But that is not true. If we have time, we'll go into the scriptures and we'll dig out all these things for you to see that even Jesus at the time had said that to the, the priests, the Pharisees, right. that they, they are so much, um, how do you call it, uh, conscious in, in, in the tithe and other things. But every other thing that they need to do, as if they have they've left that one there. But of course, they should still go ahead with the tithe. Taking tithe... It's that which helps running of the house of God. Now, the tithe that we take and the offerings, it is for the upkeep of 
the house of the Lord. In those days, the priests, they don't do anything. They don't, they don't, let me, let me end on this one. Right. They don't do anything mm -hmm. apart from they being the house of God. Right. And the tithe they bring, they eat it. Right. That's, that's how I say they eat it because right. it's, it's, it's food. Now here, this, in this time and age, where we meet, let me tell you, where we meet currently as a church, mm -hmm. our church is only about one, one this month we are, we are two years. Mm -hmm. Every hour that we have service, I'm charged 90 pounds. Okay. So it cost me almost about 750 something pounds per Sunday. Right. Every Sunday service okay. that I run. Right. So you can calculate monthly and see how much that I pay. Right. The school will not say that where we meet currently, we meet in a college. Uh, they are they are whole. They will not say that because it's a church. So come and have the service there uh, for free. Now, what will be the source of funding for running of the church? Definitely through the Titan and the offering. In those days, they were eating it. I believe, and I share the view that we should even take because the tithe simply means it's ten percent. Okay. We should we should even take more I than agree the ten percent. That. that is what I'm asking. Do we have to go with the principle of Titan? Or we should go with the principle of offering. In that way, one can offer more. Does it make sense? Because the moment you say that one is restricted by going with the percentage, the person can give more. But then he says, oh no, 10%. No, even, even, even Andy, the 10%, even the 10%, look at the hula balloon. I mean, some people who, you know, they see somewhere, they get some few... Uh, uh, credit on their phone and they begin to twitch things, they begin to say things. Look at the, the, the constant attack on pastors when it comes to offer tree. You see, it is high time we see offering and tithing as a spiritual thing and not a money thing. If we see it as a spiritual Church obligation. Thing. Right, but most of you pastors are using it for personal things which is disturbing. When you say personal thing, then uh, maybe I want to say again that when you look at the genesis mm -hmm. of, of this titan, mm -hmm. I told you that a group of people who were not a tribe working, who yeah, the God Levites. deliberately, right. God told to the them side. that you are my portion. Right. You don't have, you're not going to get any land, any right. portion or any right. parcel of land. Right. Okay. And I will let the rest go and work. So and tell, you tell, feed. tell me where Jesus said in his New Testament. You want, I want us to yes, go to Yes, give the, me that quotation the, just the before scriptures. we take a break. <laughs> okay, quickly. So I just, I would read it quick. That's what I wanted okay. so that just, just without not quoting it. Right. Um, uh, uh, quickly, I'll just take that. Um, let's look at, let's look at Hebrews. Hebrews 7. Okay. Verse 5, it says that, he said, Now the law commands the sons of Levi, who became priests, to collect a tenth, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. from the people. Okay. That is their brothers. Yeah. Even though they are descend they are, they are descended yeah. from Abraham. Right. Okay? Yeah. Now, let's look at it. Numbers chapter 18, the right. 29 to the 20 uh, second verse. Yeah. Now he said, then the Lord said to Aaron, you will have no inheritance in their land, nor will you have any portion among them. I am your portion and your inheritance among the Israelites. Behold, I have given to the Levites all the tithes in Israel. Are, 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 we, are, are you Levites? Are you from the, the descendant of the Levi family? Yes. Now, now <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> Andy, the thing is, the, the Levites right. are priests. Okay. They are, what is their work? Okay. Their work is to teach. Their work is to teach the people, the children of God, the Israelites, the ways of God. Their work is to serve God. Now, their work is to take the petition from the people, the Israelites, unto God and take from God unto the people. So they are standing in between the people and God. Okay. Okay. So now that that work, let me ask, the same work they were doing then is the same work that we are also doing now. Pastors are having other businesses, so they are not giving their whole life. 
to, well, to, to, to um, that. Well, I don't effect. think that is out of place. If right. a pastor chooses, because of course there are full time pastors, right, and they are also part time Time pastors. Now, within the even our our, brand, our church, ICGs in general, we have um, full timers, mm -hmm. and we have part time. I'm a full timer. Okay. Okay. Now, the pastoral work, I must say, is not a money making business. Okay. It's purely sacrificial. Wonderful. So anybody who comes into the fold, right. okay, with the intention of um, making money, then I must say that you are in the wrong vocation because that is what had led some people, so to speak, to engage in all this because they feel that it's a quick way to make money. Anybody with such intention, I will say that, um, there's a there should be there's a question mark on that person's head. Wonderful. Purely because let me say this. Maybe I don't know whether I should say this uh, on there, but I've I started this at church, this branch for almost about two plus years now. Okay. Right. I haven't received any salary. Wow. Okay. Well. <laughs> that is but I've given more to, to the charity. Church. Okay. Than I have taken, and it, you can you can go behind you Google Google me. You will yeah. find out the the charity work I have done. Okay, over right. the years. All right. Well, we we'll speak more with Pastor Ashon just after the break. Maintaining a presence at the forefront of a global issue with the desire to help others come to a resolve in personal and business affairs is why Andy D Legal and Immigration Associate was established. We specialize in overseas British passport applications, bills and temporary admission, deportation and detention cases. The profound pattern in achieving positive results with fragile cases in immigration, nationality, European Union and human rights law adoption, marriage, divorce, litigation, and so on, up to date, has been broken, and that is why our client base continues to expand. We also do representations at the UK border agencies and overseas consulate, human rights law, and settlement and leave to remain applications. We have the right keys to unlock any case across the spectrum of law, locally in London, and across the borders in Ghana, where our other branches are established. We are located at 44 Broadway, Stratford, E15 1XH. Our telephone number is 0203-1300-751. Welcome back. Just before the break, we were talking about Titan, but we're going to move on to something else. Pastor is going to join me some, on some other segment for us to discuss more about Titan and offering, which is um, a, a big broad uh, subject matter but just before we proceed your head pastor has been aligned with the collapse of capital bank what do you know about it i will say i don't know much about it okay but what i know is full which i'm fully aware of is that um First and foremost, there are about seven banks that uh, became insolvent. Right. Okay. But you can see that uh, the focus had been on Dr. Otterbell. Why? Good. You see, you made mention earlier in our first segment that when he speaks, he's yeah. somebody when he speaks, mm -hmm. it travels far. Right. Unlike you. Right. Okay, so maybe being in some village as you, you trying to set that example. Now, the media, as you guys are involved. Right. Because, of course, you have to create that sensationalism. That is where you make your, your money from. When... <laughs> You look at the big one among the, the rest, and then you pick that one and I don't, project I don't and think blow so. it. I don't, that is very prejudicial. I may, I may be wrong, <laughs> yes. but, but of course, as a layman, mm -hmm. in the, as far as the media is concerned, right. that is what is out there. Okay. Of, okay. It's, it's, it's part of journalism. Okay. I think uh, maybe if I'm wrong, I stand to be corrected. Well, I think you are wrong. That, that I, I'm speaking for myself. You are not, speaking for yourself. Just, I okay. just want to know, what is his affiliation to this bank? And, and why does his name 
because he's supposed to be a pastor. Is he a full-time pastor? He is a full-time pastor. So what is his affiliation to this bank? I believe that his affiliation, I mean, he, he, this is a man who had made his mark. The right. impact Dr. Otebel had had, even in Ga on Ghana alone, right. the economy in, uh, in terms of education, right. in terms of, uh, you see, it's so sad that um, all the things that he has done for the country had not really been that projected that much. But that is not to say that because he has given, you know, he, every, every year, every academic year, we have a scholarship scheme that scholarships given to most non-Christians, whatever. So long as you qualify, you have this scholarship. Supporting Kolebu, we have this university there. Supporting, uh, how do you call it, Osu Children's Home. Uh, if you, you recall, he had built a whole block for the, the children's home. He is going about having uh, mechanized boreholes in, in various communities and all the rest of it. These things, I mean, don't read. The focus really had not been on any of these things. Now, coming, that is not to say that doing, having done all these things, he should be sort of, if he's guilty, okay, he should be sort of uh, exonerated because of that. Now, coming back to your, your question, he is a leader. He has people he's raising up, he's nurturing. Mm -hmm. He found a son who has ambition, great ambition, and he saw the, some future in what that son to speak. When I say son, son in the sense that somebody that yeah, look up to yeah, you, right? You know, and you decide to get involved to help that that vision. Of course, in every business there are ups and downs. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we just have to consider the fact that that's one of the occasion that... W was he one of the board members? He is. He was. Well, yes, okay. he is one of the board so members. Would, uh, it's an open, open knowledge. Everybody okay, but why, why would he have to be a board member in order to help his son? He is a full-time pastor. You see, the fact that he is a pastor, right. it doesn't um, sort of prevent him from... Uh, sort of being a chairman or uh, an executive member of a board or do any other business. Apostle Paul was a tent maker, yet he was doing the work of God. He was a tent maker. At the Peter, same time? Yes. All right. Yes. So, so now, this now, means Mensa Otabel has now become a banker. And doing the same work well, of God is in a way. One the question is, is there anything wrong about that? Right. Definitely not. No. Okay. If if you see, um, if everybody knows that in business there are ups and downs. Right. Okay. But I don't want to go too much into this matter because um, the the government institution that uh, see to these things uh, are investigating this matter. Right. And so uh, we all need to. Uh, have a little bit of uh, patience. Uh, patience, so and we don't indulgence. miscarriage. Yeah, we don't miscarriage uh, our patients, and then we say or do things which eventually, uh, when it comes that is it's exonerated, then uh, we 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 bow our heads in. Uh, which in is more shape. more likely to be the case? Um, I think so. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, uh, well, in your your most of your members hail him as a man of great integrity. Yeah, and you stand by him. Certainly so. Should it come out, should this story come out to be the obvious? Would you still stand by this statement? Now, um, I think I would answer this question, if you pardon me, when the, the, decision, the, is the decision is made. Then I can answer this question fair and square. How often do you speak to men, Sautaba? As in me, personally. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, before I came here, I had a word with him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I had a word with him before I came to seek his blessing as a father and as my general overseer and my mentor. So I, 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 I have met with him before coming here. Okay. And has he, since the insertion of this issue, have you spoken to him? 
No. Why not? Of you course. Are, you are heading one of its branches. Branches, that's right. Uh, and I'm sure most of your members will be wondering. They might, they might not come to you directly, but you, you might. You know, yes, hear of course. It. None had come to me yet. If okay. any had come to me, of course, then I would know the answer to give right. to um, that member. Okay. You've seen him sing and, you know, and sing praise and dance, even though this is going on. Don't you think even before judgment is, is, is passed from, you know, investigations that are going on, that he has to come out to his congregants, not probably to Ghanaians, but yes. his folks, that look, this is what happened. Don't you think he, the, the members deserve the right to know? Oh, I think he's done that in okay. the media. In the media? Yes, he's come and he's written uh, at the same to that effect. Yes. That was a couple of weeks ago or last month. Yes, he did that. Even so, he didn't sit well still with people. You see, um, I think that what we need to, all need to do is to not to miscarriage our patients. We need to wait so that the uh, the government institution that mm -hmm. is put in place to mm -hmm. uh, uh, do this to investigate this mm -hmm. thing they are still at work mm -hmm. i think the yoko right mm -hmm. yeah. yes uh, there's a commission that of inquiry that are going in, into this once they come out then uh, we all uh, see where we stand and uh, what to to, do, to take do, this do you matter. think in general people envy pastor Menza or people just see him as a man of controversy because was, uh, likes of Adum FM, Captain Smart has called for his arrest. And you, like you correctly said, even though investigation is not concluded, a lot of people has, have read into his assets, his financial links to universities, his cars, his houses. I'm not sure he's disclosed any of these to the Ghanaian public. Is, he, is he supposed to disclose his no, assets no, to Ghanaian public? Exactly, but do you think he's just a man of controversy and that is why people dislike him? You see, when, let me, let me just give this example. When you see a mango tree right. and there are mangoes on them, right. okay, let me ask, if there are ripe ones and unripe ones, which one would you cast a stone at? Normally you go for the ripe one. Great. Mm -hmm. So he's a ripe one. Why am I saying so? You see, he has by under, under, I mean, he has, he has, sort of lived his life well. Mm -hmm. When you say controversy, I would say that people can choose to sort of cast some aspersions, give him names and call him names and all, but he's a leader. Now, every leader of a stature, one way or the other, had had the fair share of these things. Even our Lord Jesus Christ went through worse. You see, he was called names. People, he has even healed. They called, they mentioned, they called this. They were saying that he was working, we were preaching with demons, Beelzebub. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as of the name calling, and uh, as you are here, mm -hmm. nobody probably would would sort of, you, 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 are, you would not be a target that much. Yeah. Okay, because once you get out there, if you're an achiever, mm -hmm. you both will have enemies mm -hmm. and friends. Right. Okay, so yeah. anybody who doesn't like you, no mm -hmm. matter what you have achieved, like I enumerated the things he has done, the charity work uh, or the, that he has done over the years, mm -hmm. you see, just f something few is little is mentioned about it. Okay. okay, yeah, so, but when it came to this matter, there are about seven other banks. How come is Dr. Otaba in particular? But there are seven other banks, but no pastor was affiliated or is affiliated to any of these banks. Good. So the issue is that he's a pastor. So if he, he, he wasn't a pastor, then it means that he wouldn't, the matter wouldn't have been taken to this level. So you, you, you make, you know, you've opened a tin of worms now. Right. The, the, the reason for which he's under this level of attack yeah. is because he's a pastor. Right. Okay. So then it means that people expect. Uh, 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 more from him right. like uh, than the ordinary uh, right. person. Right. Is that not the case? That's right. That is why I'm saying that as it stands, he has not been proven guilty okay. by any institution or by any court of uh, competent jurisdiction as, the, as, as we speak. So why don't we hold our patience and not miscarriage it before everything comes up? Should, should he be found guilty? 
okay, and there is a verdict for him to be sentenced to prison. Yeah. Would you support or still um, I, I, maintain your position? Great. I, I maintain my position in the, what, in the fact that what I would do and not do right. will all be determined we'll at that all time. all be determined what the verdict or the outcome will be. Because as, there are situations, right. as we speak, if a snake should just appear from maybe any of this angle, then okay. you will know which direction, direction to run you to. would run to. Okay. Do you understand? Right. That is not to say because, of course, if you have a leader, one thing that every follower need mm -hmm. to have, mm -hmm. to com that need to commit mm -hmm. to the leader, mm -hmm. is a loyalty. Right. Every leader deserves or must be given some kind of loyalty. Okay. Jesus Christ's disciples demonstrated sin. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Peter at a point was loyal to Christ when he had told him we're going to I'll be going to the cross. Jesus, Peter came and said, No way. Anybody who attempt to come for you, he pulled out his knife and he said, I would have to the pe I would have to kill the person. And indeed he proved it by cutting the ears of Marcus, one of the priest servants. But Jesus told him to put it back. And he has to fix the ear back. So every leader, you need to have so have people that that you know, uh, if you like, uh, sort of demonstrate some level of loyalty to. Okay. So you will maintain loyalty to Mensa Utaba, even even if she should be found guilty. That is that is what it should be. It should and be. That is what okay. uh, my position is. There are a lot of pastors now affiliated to political parties. Um, people have suggested Menza Otabel mm -hmm. and uh, some others, uh, mm -hmm. don't want to mention names, yeah. uh, MPP. Yeah, but you mentioned Dr. Otabel. Yeah, because you, you are sitting <laughs> oh, here. Oh, is the No, 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 okay. Be because you are, you are sitting here. <laughs> All right, okay. In, in, in and representing the, the church. What political party do you and your pastor belong to or support? Um, I want to say this, that Dr. Otabel doesn't belong to any political party okay. that I know of. Mm. Um, I, can say for, I can say this for a fact, that he votes for personalities and not parties. Okay. He, of course. This is then you the question will come the hard you know because right. the, the he goes to vote and he vote it has to be a, a how do you call it a, a private something between yeah. you but of course uh, I'm speaking what he has said okay okay and I want to believe it because okay. whatever people claim they are believe them okay mm -hmm. so I believe him a man of of that high uh, uh, integrity. And, 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 and uh, of, of, of that, an astute man of that, that nature, uh, I believe that whatever he says is what he stands for. And I must believe him for what he says. So I believe, based on what I've heard him say, he always votes for personalities and not party. Of course, it is a common tradition in Ghana to affiliate almost every pastor to one uh, uh, party or the other. Right. And you as the pastor, it's up to you to make sure that your members, you don't make it too obvious yeah. because you are you are leading a group of people mm -hmm. from different backgrounds mm -hmm. and you have people from all these parties and okay. so you cannot really uh, stick your neck out and say, I'm for this party. Right. Mm -hmm. In respect of Current, I mean, in 2011, uh, Pastor Otabel and Duncan Williams, two huge uh, religious figures um, in Ghana, uh, did not get along. I mean, there was a crossover sermon, I believe, every year. Was that you know, and also Pastor Duncan Williams also did similar. Mm -hmm. That sparked some sort of confusion. I'm sure you were then with the this particular church. So what is the current situation now in terms of talking about unity among pastors and churches? Are they in good terms? 
Of course. Um, you have heard Donka Williams um, uh, speaking publicly to his congregants mm. uh, in support of uh, uh, what the, I mean, the current situation is, mm. that uh, members are to refrain from speaking on, about Dr. Otterville's issue. Right. Uh, the fact that if you, you don't know the full details mm. of, of the matter, don't get involved. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe that Definitely, if there is any uh, uh, tension between them, he wouldn't speak in support and uh, in support of his of Dr. Otterbell, you see. So now, when you talk about these are uh, two big men, okay, um, I should not be in the position to know whether they are in talking terms or not. But as far as I can see, because of course, as followers, we we see. Uh, uh, what our leaders do, mm -hmm. okay, and for what I'm seeing, I've seen between both of them, of course I, I've said that they, they, everything is alright, well and good between them what happened in 2011 is, is gone and is gone for good. Right recent years and um, uh, uh, with the evolving of the Christian community and kingdom um there seems to be a sharp contrast between the so-called prophets and preachers, or you know, like Mensah Ojebel. What do you think should be done to bring the two together? When you say the sharp contrast, I, if you I mean obviously, it for me. most people believe, well, I'll come for preaching here and I'll go for prophecy there, whereas in ICGC there are prophets. So what? How can the two merge together? Uh, you know, let's say Obinim having a sermon with Mensah Otabel because you see them, it is always, you will never, I don't think, uh, or Pambo or, I mean, you, there is clear segregation in terms of these two categories. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you would agree you see, with me. In, in the book of Ephesians, I think Ephesians 4, the Bible clearly reveals the, the various, uh, the five, what you call the fivefold ministry. Okay. Okay. Some were called as prophets, right. others were called as teachers, right. others were called as pastors, others were called as apostles, mm -hmm. and others were called as evangelists. Okay. You see, it's a body. Okay. Okay. It's a body, and they are all working together. You see, the fivefold ministry is like a building. Mm -hmm. You have the apostolic ministry as the foundation. Yeah. You have the prophetic ministry as the roof. Right. Okay. You have the every every building has also windows. Okay, right. so to speak, every building that is habitable right. has windows and has doors. So you have the evangelistic ministry as the windows okay. and the doors. Okay. Right. Now you also have the pillars. Of course, there are pillars. I can see pillars in this beautiful place. Now the pillars, the the, the teachers stand for the how do you call it? The the, the pillars. Okay, right. stand for the teachers. Okay. Right. Then the walls also st uh, stand for the pastors. Now, every all these things, when you put it together, it, it becomes what? A building. A building. Right. Okay. Right. All of them are important. Okay. His area of calling or his area of ministry is he's a teacher. Okay. Okay. Now, that does not mean that because he's a teacher, so then the rest of the fivefold ministry which have been given to equip the saints is not welcome. Okay. We have Prophet Tano, mm -hmm. if you know of him. I've heard a of renowned yeah. uh, prophet right. in ICGC. Okay. But as I said earlier, there's a reason why we don't really most times go by the, 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 the title prophet. prophet. Okay. Okay. Now, it, is not, it doesn't mean that there are no problem. There are a lot of, of people within the ICGC uh, family okay. that are calling the prophetic ministry, you see. Mm. But because of some of the, the rot, some of the things that are going on, it's only modest to go by the that because now the, the pastoral uh, uh, office, or if you like, it's it's more or less like uh, um, a, a, a fatherly um, uh, ministry. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. uh -huh, a fatherly ministry. So that is that is what it is with with the ICGC uh, church. 
we have various people. I can say humbly that, of course, the records are there to show, okay? Um, I, I have giftings in that area. Right. Okay. Right. But it doesn't mean that um, because I don't go by the title, of course, when you ask me, I was, I was contacted, I didn't give my name as prophet yeah. because I believe that uh, the title really, it doesn't do much. Okay. Okay. The t your, your result will prove indeed that this is who you are. Wonderful. You see, exactly. Wonderful. Well, it is pleasure having you here. I just want you to grant a few words to your followers and to your congregants. All right. Um, I want to express my uh, profound gratitude to your highly esteemed, uh, as Andy TV, uh, Andy, Andy D -TV. D -TV. Uh, it's been awesome. Okay. And uh, I want to say one thing uh, to your esteemed viewers and my as well that will be watching, that wherever you are listening from or watching me, it's about time you give your life to Christ because Jesus is coming soon. As I'm speaking, so many people are dying here and there. But have you paused to ask yourself, where are these people dying to? In the book of Hebrews, he said, For it's appointed unto all men once to die, and after that judgment. Now, once you are alive, I want to offer this opportunity to you to give your life to Christ. Forsake your ways and accept Jesus Christ. He loves you whoever you are, regardless of the scene or whatever you are living in. Jesus loves you. Come on right home. He's calling you. Wherever you are, you can surrender yourself. Ask the Lord to forgive you all your sins and ask him to come into your heart and make you one of God's children. Because once you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are now given the power to be a son of God. If you don't have Jesus, you are God's creator. But you have Jesus, you become a son and a daughter of God. May the Lord bless you. Keep watching on the DTV. God bless you. Shalom, peace and life to you. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Pastor did my closing statement for me. So, <laughs> well, thank you for watching. You heard it all from Pastor Eshan. Uh, he is a wonderful man of God, and I've got a great pleasure speaking to him today. Remember to follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and on Instagram and Twitter. That is Andy D TV. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get all current videos. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed and goodbye.